actually doesn't matter if we get a hard landing, soft landing. That was all last year's game. This year's game is how much liquidity comes into the system, even without liquidity, as long as the Fed are not just if they if they just take their foot off the beach ball that's underwater, it's going to burst out because these things are in secular uptrends. Both crypto and technology stocks are in the secular uptrend. So as soon as you kind of stop the rate of change of rate rises, it all goes up. Slightly over two weeks ago, the US dot Federal Reserve greenlit another interest rate hike, driving the benchmark borrowing rate to a 22-year high of 5.25 to 5.5%. This move intensified pressure on the economy and markets, but a shift in outlook is now emerging. Traders, analysts, and investment banks are revising their expectations. Although the Federal Open Market Committee initially indicated two more rate hikes during its June meeting, market sentiment has pivoted. Macro analyst Raul Pal of Real Vision believes the cycle of tightening imposed by central banks that has suppressed cryptocurrency values is on the verge of ending, possibly paving the way for rate cuts by early 2024. Recent reports highlight a notable shift in expectations. Futures traders connected to Fed policy rates are now assigning a mere 10% chance of a rate increase in the upcoming FOMC meeting, down from an earlier projection of about 14%. The likelihood of a rate hike by November has dwindled to 28%. Against this evolving backdrop, futures contracts indicate that the first Fed rate reduction could materialize by March 2024. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Crypto tends to be forward-looking, so it follows the liquidity cycle, and the liquidity cycle is kind of how much the central banks are printing, really. And so we kind of know that as economies slow down or rates get too high and the economy slows down, the probability going forwards of them having to cut rates goes up. Yeah. So our liquidity indicators at Global Macro Investor back in June started bottoming. And that's when I bought ETH into the, or added to my ETH, into that low. And then the rest of our indicators kind of bottomed in October, just as the markets bottom. And it worked really well. And so the crypto markets have been forward-looking. ETH seems to be more forward-looking than, than Bitcoin right now. And so they have been rallying on liquidity conditions easing somewhat. And these are global conditions, not just the U.S., so we had the Bank of Japan increasing their balance sheet. We had the Bank of England and a few others here and there and other liquidity indicators doing that. So that drove that forward. NFTs are like the assets in the ETH economy. And if you think of usually assets are the last things to bottom. So the stock market usually bottoms first. So like right now in the US, the stock market bottomed in October, but the housing market's still going down, right? And we're seeing it with Rolex watches as well because people's discretionary spending has gone down. And nobody's got any capital gains from trading. Everyone's just taking losses all day. So therefore, there's little demand for NFTs. So we're in that bottoming phase for NFTs. And I've been mentioning this recently as well. And it's the lagged effect as the ETH economy starts to recover. As the ETH economy recovers, we'll see a lot more you know, activity in, in crypto. And then we'll see NFTs starting to pick up as people got money to spend on you know, trophy assets or whatever within the, within, um, the ETH economy. So that's where I think we are now. My work suggests that this is only going to accelerate, even though today like rates are really keep going up at the moment. And while the Fed look like they're pretty much done, I mean, inflation keeps falling and everyone's kind of lost sight of that. But I think the bond market's having to suffer from too much issuance of new bonds because the government's having to pay the interest on the debt. And the interest rate has gone up so much that they generate, they have to sell more and more bonds. And the bond market doesn't like that at all. You know, you'd see the same in crypto or anything else. When there's excess supply, the price collapses. So that's what's going on right now, which I think only exacerbates the chance that things get worse and therefore perversely things get better for the markets because they look forwards to, oh, well, if things are really shit now, they're going to have to start cutting rates and they're going to have to start doing quantitative easing next year. I learned over time that the best strategies have a long-term time horizon. And then when these kind of business cycle troughs, you know, in, uh, you know, in crypto, they're 80% 80, 80 down the moon, yeah. but they're in that long-term uptrend, right? And yeah. the magic is to add to your positions every time it hits the long-term uptrend and everybody hates it, right? That's yeah. really where you make all of the money. Um, so what we saw, what we do is we look at these indicators with a year-on-year -year rate of change. 
And what you're looking for is liquidity to stop going down. And then it starts ticking up and maybe it crosses through zero or not that, but just on its way up, usually that's the signal that liquidity's bottomed. And you look, know, it's probabilistic. So it's not always 100% certainty, but it's like, listen, the price has collapsed. All the worst news in the world is out. Everybody hates each other on Twitter. You know, everybody's sure. Everyone thinks everything's going to go bust since the end of the world. That's usually a good time. And if the liquidity indicators are saying, hey, listen, the absolute worst is now behind us. Also, it's really interesting because a lot of people get caught with present day conditions, their narrative, and then saying, well, why is the price not lower? Particularly like in the stock market right now. People are like, why isn't it lower? There's going to be a recession or whatever. It was all priced in last year. I mean, we had a seven, an 80% bear market in crypto plus. I mean, if that wasn't a recession, then I've no idea what is. The NASDAQ was down 35%. You know, that's a recession. That's a regular kind of recession in the NASDAQ. So it all happened last year because markets are forward looking. They could see what was going on. They could see that the Fed jacking up rates at the fastest pace in history was going to cause an economic slowdown. According to Powell's analysis, the relentless series of interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve, which have been the swiftest in U.S. history, have acted as the suppressing force on the economy and consequently on cryptocurrency asset prices. He likens this phenomenon to submerging a beach ball underwater, where the current force is set to be relieved, allowing the beach ball to soar unhindered. Powell forecasts a surge in the prices of crypto assets and technology stocks, both of which he believes are riding a prolonged exponential trend that is now poised to ascend rapidly a trend commonly observed when central banks initiate monetary expansion. During discussions about the crypto projects he's invested in and anticipates to excel during the upcoming cycle, Pal cites Ethereum, Solana, and Dogecoin. Returning to the interview, Pal delves into the reasons underlying his bullish stance on these specific assets. I'm not Web3 or crypto agnostic. You know, I'm a passionate believer and want to educate people and help people understand that journey and help institutional investors to corporations, to anybody, use this technology because, you know, we all passionately believe in why. But at my level, I, I want to make money out of it too, right? It's this magic thing where you can kind of help change the world and also make money at the same time. So all I do is just look at a couple of things. One is I use Metcalfe's law, which is like how you value networks. And it sounds like it's very fancy, but really it's some proxy of number of active addresses and the value that gets transacted on that chain each week or each month. And you find that once you use a measurement like that, pretty much all of the chains are valued accurately versus that activity. So I look for that and you think, okay, well, what's got more adoption capability right now, Bitcoin or ETH? Now, Bitcoin's changed somewhat with ordinals and other stuff, right? But really, ETH is where everybody's building everything. Okay, and it's a, it's a large asset. So then I just look at the chart of the Bitcoin ETH cross, and, you know, this bear market, ETH did not sell off versus Bitcoin. You know, in the bigger picture, it's really been in this kind of wedge pattern that usually looks like it's another breakout to come. So that kind of makes fundamental sense to me because there's more activity on chain. And um, and so I think price drives it. Now, um, I then started looking at other assets. And the one that I noticed got a lot of adoption, a lot of developers, a lot of activity was Solana. So I look at the Solana ETH cross and it's like, hell, that looks like it's break, It's going to break out too. So my allocations are really something like 80% ETH, 20% Solana. Um, and there's you know other bits and pieces there here and there. But really, it's like it's a concentrated bet. I could change my mind if things change. I could be 100% Solana. I could be something else. But, you know, this bit, the kind of top middle to top tier is an easier trade than trying to find the next big thing. And I'm never going to make the 500x doing this, but but I'm, I'm unlikely to lose all my money. Um, <laughs> you know, if I look at the dust in my bags from the last cycle where I tried to buy like a equally weighted basket of smaller stuff, I mean, all of that was a failure apart from very few things. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, focus on it. The other one that I'm actually focused on, I've mentioned this a few times before, I don't really have a, much of a position in it, but is Doge. And the reason we being, it has a lot of owners, but no network effects, apart from memes. 
if Elon uses it, so right now, most people don't realize this because half of Twitter is, is American. We don't get payments from Twitter because we can't have Stripe here in the Cayman Islands. And that's true everywhere. So there's a whole bunch of people all around the world who use Twitter who can't get payments. How do you create a global payment system for everybody? Well, just use an existing crypto. And he's Elon's made this very clear that he wants to use Doge. So if I can just instantly pay you in Doge for something via Twitter and you can convert it back into your currency of choice, kind of works. So I've got my eye on that and that because that could be a fun one. Um, but otherwise, I just try and stay away from all of the FOMO. You know, I've got a lot of friends of mine hitting me up about Pepe and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm just not going to do it because as soon as I get into it, it's too late. Pal and futures traders are not alone in their prediction that the Federal Reserve is concluding its cycle of rate hikes. Coindesk has reported that numerous investment banks also share this view, suggesting that further rate increases might not be in the cards. According to James Meglay, chief international economist at ING, the current state of the economy provides little justification for the Fed to persist with its tightening measures. The July jobs payroll report, in Megley's view, doesn't indicate a renewed need for the Fed to raise interest rates again in September. The Federal Reserve has already signaled a preference for a more gradual tightening of policy, which aligns with the perceived cooling of the labor market. Meglay further contends that the recent uptick in the 10-year Treasury yield serves as yet another indicator that the Fed won't announce another rate hike in the upcoming September meeting. This sentiment is reinforced by the increased Treasury yield and the strengthening dollar following the Fitch downgrade and the U.S. Treasury funding announcement. As Meglay noted, these factors strengthen the conviction that the Fed won't find it necessary to pursue further interest rate hikes. Do you share the perspective that the Federal Reserve has reached the end of its rate hiking cycle and might initiate rate cuts early next year? Feel free to share your thoughts and observations in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.